Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. And we are connected with Harley Schlanger. And Harley, uh, what's the latest news on, on world events? What's happening? Well, we're in a completely uncharted territory, really. You have the president making a complete ass of himself in, in, while he's in Africa. But what was really going on while he was there was that you had the United States essentially hijack a plane, uh, forcing the president of uh, Bolivia to land in uh, Vienna because the U.S. got the French and the Portuguese to refuse to allow the plane to go over their airspace. And the ostensible reason was that they thought Snowden might be on the plane. You're kidding. Yeah, now there's no evidence so far that Snowden was on the plane. The plane spent seven hours in Vienna airport. Uh, the president of Austria came to talk to Morales, and Morales was eventually allowed to fly back. But in the meantime, the defense minister of Bolivia put out a statement saying that this was a pretext, it was a lie, it was an insult, it was virtually an act of war. Now, it's not that Bolivia is threatening to go to war with the United States, but this is occurring in the context where it was revealed this last week that the United States had put bugs in the fax machine in the European Union office. Right. This was covered in Der Spiegel magazine in Germany. Now, the question is, does the NSA think that members of the European Union are working with Al-Qaeda and that by bugging their facts, they're going to get evidence on potential terrorist actions against the United States. Now, this shows the extent to which this is a global operation run by the United States and the British, spying on absolutely everyone. Now, at the same time, you have a showdown going on in Egypt, where the people are mobilizing against the Muslim Brotherhood presidency of Mohamed Morsi. And President Obama, true to his nature, placed a call to Morsi, where he essentially said he told Morsi the military should not pull a coup against him, the demonstrators should be peaceful, and Morsi should negotiate. Well, Morsi had already said he's not going to negotiate, and right. he said after the call from Obama that Obama supports him and what he's doing. So there are 40 some people who have been killed today in, in fighting in the streets of Egypt. Uh, this is going to get worse. Well, the military has given him the notice that if they don't, if he doesn't leave office today, the military is going to storm the offices and take him. And the Egyptian military is part of a secular state. They don't support the idea of, an, of Egypt as an Islamic state. But the U.S. president is threatening them that if they bring down Morsi, who's highly unpopular right now, and, and the reason he's unpopular has nothing to do with the Muslim Brotherhood, it's that the economy has continued to get worse because the Morsi regime signed an agreement to continue the policies of the International Monetary Fund, which are destroying the Egyptian economy. So his unpopularity means that we're seeing a replay of what was the original cause of the Arab Spring, which was anger over austerity politics. Now the question is, if the, the president knows there are millions of people demonstrating against Morsi, why is he not calling for Morsi to, to step down the way he's called for Assad to step down? In Syria, you didn't have millions in the streets against Assad. You had armed terrorists and thugs in the streets. And the president of the United States supported the armed terrorists and al-Qaeda-linked thugs in Syria. And in Egypt, he's supporting the president who's opposed by the majority of his population now. And this is a president, Morsi, who has called for holy war against Assad. So this just cinches the case that if the NSA wants to find out what's behind international terrorism, they should be bugging President Obama's BlackBerry. Yeah, what's going on is his policies are completely puppeted by the uh, British bankers. Uh, they completely uh, lack any logic or common sense or even foreign policy that makes sense. And Morsi, basically, this is uh, going to boil over if it, if it continues into a full-blown civil war. Well, it, it, it already is heading in that direction. 
And, of course, this may not, who knows what Obama thinks he's doing. I think he thinks that, you know, it's ironic. I don't know if you saw this, but when he was in Soweto, the uh, the black enclave in Johannesburg, uh, or, yeah, I guess it's Johannesburg, South Africa, trying to wrap himself in the mantle of Mandela, there was an editorial right. in a South African paper that said that Mandela spent 27 years in prison before he emerged and became the leader of his nation. Obama, in contrast, has had absolutely everything handed to him, including a Harvard Law degree, a position in the Illinois State Senate, a, a rich, fancy house, uh, royalties from crappy books, and uh, the presidency from George Soros. And he finished with the famous line from Lloyd Benson, uh, Mr. Obama, we know Nelson Mandela, and you're no Nelson Mandela. Now, at the same time he was getting attacked by the press, there were crowds in the street carrying our poster, LaRouche Pack's poster, of Obama wow. with a Hitler mustache with the caption, I've changed under it. And this picture, which had a, a, about a 12-year-old boy holding the poster, went out internationally. So while Obama thinks he's being hailed as the second coming of Jesus or something of that sort, even right. in Africa, you have mobs demonstrating against him. So Lyndon LaRouche this weekend said we've, we've passed a turning point where Obama's popularity is going to continue to fall. You, you saw Dr. Deagle, I'm sure, the uh, administration drop the employer mandate on Obamacare because they know the employers are enraged that they're going to get hit with fines if they don't come up with a... a an acceptable health insurance policy. And so this is now being postponed until 2015 to try and protect the Democrats in the 2014 election. But this guy... I, I think they're... He's, uh, I, he's, he's totally right. screwing it up for all the Democrats, too. All the Republicans have to do is get their act together. Uh, and they won the 2014 and 2016 election. Uh, it's literally a, it's like, a, a, we can play hockey, it's like going down the ice with nobody opposing you and putting it in the net with no goalie. All the Republicans have to do is start having rational immigration policy, rational financial, put up glass steagle, start putting countervailing tariffs against the predatory nations, making America independent in energy, starting projects like NAWAPA and infrastructure, rebuilding American sovereignty, uh, and uh, stop this crazy austerity fascism. And uh, guess what? The Republicans will sail right into the next elections, uh, but they need to clean up their own act. And right now, uh, there's a big battle going on inside the Republican Party where, you know, the Gang of Eight, for example, their immigration policy with Rubio, this is just plain stupid. It's not necessary well, at all. They, there's no reason for them to have to put everything into an immigration bill. They got steamrolled by the media, which said that Hispanics will vote for the Democrats unless the Republicans support an immigration bill. That's just not true at all. Mm, A lot no. of the Hispanics in this country want to know what the Republicans are going to do about jobs, about housing. They're not so worried right. about immigrants. Uh, this is just another false flag that's been raised, and the Republicans would rather fight over this issue than do something about the economy. Exactly. Exactly. So if the Republicans put together proper economic policies, and if we had somebody even like Romney, if, as much as he was a, I would call the first candidate for Ashburger's president, <laughs> he was a business genius, though, and he would have been able to write the economy what we have is a situation now we have a, men a mentally ill, drug addict, uh, incompetent in Obama who basically follows orders, then balks, and then does stupid policies like these comments uh, about Morsi and pushes for more intervention in Syria that will inflame the whole area and yet solves nothing, nothing. Amazing. late night <clears throat> welcome back and uh, 
Some of these other articles are so great. I mean, China uh, Daily refers to uh, LaRouche's energy flux density. This is basically the whole issue of Tier 1 science being held back, like tokamak fusion, helium-3 reactors, plasma distribution lines, alternative energy from geothermal uh, wave energy, such as research of the Bay of Fundy. Uh, other technologies, the fact is abiotic oil, which is the source of almost all the oil on the planet. CO2 is good because it may converts plants, makes plants grow, which is why you pump it into greenhouses. It's not a death gas. In fact, it may counteract some of the monitor cooling, which can wipe out crops because we're heading into a major global famine, primarily caused by climate cooling, a monitor type which caused the Vikings and the northern tribes to abandon Greenland. It's happening again. And in fact, the Chinese know this from their own studies. The Chinese are not stupid. They're building infrastructure. When all these crises hit in 2008, they didn't do the stupid things America did by bumping trillions of dollars into two big to fail banks like Bank of America, etc. They decided to build infrastructure. They have two clues to rub together. Well, we had a, uh, a representative of the Institute for Sino Strategic Studies, a Chinese uh, U.S. based organization, speak at our conference in San Francisco. By the way, our conference in San Francisco this last weekend was, was spectacular. We had uh, uh, the head of our Australian organization was there and talked about the infrastructure potential in Australia as opposed to the push to get Australia into a war with China. Uh, we had a uh, representative from Mexico, a, a biologist, who talked about energy flux density. We had a farm leader, uh, a California farm organization leader, speaking about the destruction of the food supply for and, um, using free trade policy in California. And then we had uh, this a Chinese guy, Victor Chang, who did a really interesting presentation on the U.S. and China, natural allies. And he went through the parallels between Confucian philosophy, the philosophy of Confucius, and the U.S. Declaration of Independence and uh, Constitution. And it was very interesting because he, he made the case convincingly. And what you see is that what he said is there are a lot of people in China now in leadership who have recognized that this is the only way that China and the U.S. can get along is on this higher level of principle. Because at this point, the two countries are at different stages of development. The U.S. is going down and China is going up. But we still need each other. And instead, you've got this president pushing this Asia, air, sea, land battle strategy, which is moving us into the danger of war with China. Also, the right. people we're supporting in uh, Syria, the rebels, include the Uyghur separatist movement, that is the Chinese Muslims from Xinjiang province in the southwest part of the country, who are terrorists, who are bombing, doing bombings in China. And they're getting training now in Syria by the U.S. CIA. So this is one of yeah, the reasons crazy. the Chinese are quite angry at the United States. Well, no wonder what the Chinese want to do is they want to expand trade. You know, if let's say we take it uh, 10 years from now, 2023, what China wants is a high-speed gas and rail lines from Alaska over to China. They want high-speed rail. They want to have a, a, a form of free trade where uh, where we still have more level wages, we have better uh, pollution standards to, to encourage the Chinese to put smokestack scrubbers so they don't pollute the troposphere. We want a system where their people are being treated more fairly by transnational corporations, just like the recent uh, situation in, in China where they're moving a plant to India, and the Chinese actually uh, kidnapped the director of the yeah. plant because they weren't going to get yeah. paid their wages. We want to have these issues dealt with, but the only way to do that is an open uh, society, not a closed one. We don't want uh, China to go back into a more closed, more totalitarian state. We want it open because our culture, uh, the culture of America and of the West, is very erosive to that's why even Islam, you see more and more Islamic nations and people are going to revolt against the tiny fraction of extreme Islam. They're being hijacked. Here in America, I'm sure there's doctors, accountants, uh, technicians, people that are Muslim that are completely pissed off with the idea that the extreme Muslims are giving them a bad black eye. That they're already creating a situation where it's almost guaranteeing that our actions will result in Israel nuking most of the Muslim nations within 7,000 miles. Well, and we are coming on the side Muslims of extreme terrorists. Alliance with Barack Obama. 
Exactly. And so what they're doing is they're radicalizing the situation to create world war. They're radicalizing the situation in which will close the Strait of Hormuz and cut off the one-third of the world oil supply. They're putting the nation of Israel in danger so they have, they'll do a preemptive strike because they can't withstand a conventional war. We have, we have Europe teetering on the edge of disaster, and yet the Fed Reserve behind the scenes says they're going to loan more money. When Obama basically has fired Bernanke, and it's the end. We know the end of this year, five months away, the, the two field to bail banks, we're going to have a banker blowout, not in, in a kind of a nice, smooth way of a proper bankruptcy reorganization, but a disaster. And none of this needs to happen. It's all under incredible incompetence. It's not even, even if you're greedy, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do this kind of stuff even if you're just greedy. But it's not about greed. It's about the view of man that these guys have and what you're dealing with right. in terms of the, the oligarchy. Is their view that people right. should be dumb slaves that can be used for the sake of uh, increasing the power of the oligarchs? And that includes lowering the population, which is what their policies are doing. And so what we're looking at with Obama is a president who is completely in the pocket of this network. And yeah, you know, unless we get rid it? of him, we're going to end up paying the supreme price, which will be the collapse of our nation. Yeah, it's really, uh, really awful. And, yeah. of course, it's already, in a sense, happening already, isn't it? Well, it is. And you, the, the Federal Reserve policy uh, at this point which is to continue the bailouts because they don't know how to get out of the bailout without collapsing the bond market. And so they're continuing to pump more money, and this is the hyperinflationary policy LaRouche has warned about. And they have not yet figured out that, well, they have figured it out. They just don't know what to do. And so the Bank for International Settlements is saying that the only solution for the United States is end quantitative easing, let some things collapse, and go with uh, massive austerity. Now, the Bank for International Settlements, as I'm sure you know, was one of the pro-Nazi banks in the 1930s. It was essentially a clearinghouse for the international banks. And this is what was done uh, to make sure the Nazis had an ability to, to keep, keep getting money. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh... This policy, though, I think is going to blow up in the face. And there should be a number of Democrats that actually realize that Obama's policy is going to completely blow out. If the Republicans even halfway get their act together, their chances of a 2014 re-election. The gun issue is one. We have seven states where they're disputing in the states where people basically don't just like their guns. They love their guns. Their guns are like, you know, their left or right leg. You're not going to take their guns. And uh, Obama's policy toward jobs, he's alienated the blacks. It says in one of the articles I was reading yesterday that the blacks have been put to the back of the bus and the gays are in the front. It's crazy. It's like, Obama, don't you get it? Well, it, you know, the it's, Voting it's Rights incredible. Act was eviscerated to some extent by the Supreme Court, and Obama barely peeped about it. But he was effusive in praising the Supreme Court ruling on the Defense of Marriage Act. And I thought it was very funny in Senegal when he gave this great statement about how this is American civil rights. They asked the president of Senegal what he thought. And he said, well, in our country, homosexuality is a uh, prosecutable offense. Right, exactly. Welcome back, and uh, let's talk solutions. I think the Republican Party, and we need to have people contact the Republican congressman now. During this 4th of July a week, and uh, emails, um, voice messages, faxes. And the reason is that we need to convince them they can't use Obama's incompetence in these things because I think there's a Hell's Kitchen menu of issues that Obama could use with now the what I call preloaded, uh, you know, press play and reset, uh, martial law, total dictatorship. We have the making of Barack Adolf Obama. We have a dictator in waiting. And all we need to do is have a disaster, an airborne plague, bond market bloat, a coronal mass ejection, anything. And Obama is going to declare mar martial law. I mean, formally, full-blown, kick your butt. He just signed last week a deal with the Russians, which may be why Putin was kind of prevaricating and telling uh, Mr. Snowden that he shouldn't kind of do any more harm to America. It's like, what? 
what kind of comment is this coming out of the mouth of Mr. Putin? What the hell happened? Well, so, see, um, I don't think, I, I'm, I, look, Putin I think, did not stop Snowden from still releasing material. So I don't think, look, I, I think Putin has made a very... He's, he's, he's playing a game. He's playing a game, yeah, but here, here's the point. Yeah. The point is that we need to get, we need to have the Republicans move their butt and get Obama out of power because if we wait to 2014, sometime between now and next summer, I have some multiple in sources inside the government that we're going to have martial law by next summer. We're going to have one of many different events, at least three or four, that are not possible but probable, and Obama will use them as an excuse, as well as this war in the Middle East. So that just blows up. That's sufficient by itself. The oil will cut off from the Strait of Hormuz. We won't be in a recession. We won't be in this this doldrums, especially if they blow and stop putting money into the two big failed banks and pumping up the stock market. We will be in a situation where we'll be in a full-fledged famine and depression. Well, the, the, Russians, Obama is the Republicans it. need the Republicans need to learn from Putin and from Dempsey, who are the only people really resisting Obama right now. Right. And the Republicans instead are lining up with him on Syria. Many of them are supporting him on the NSA police state spying. You do have yeah, like, some uh, Republicans John and Democrats McCain. <laughs> working together to stop it. Yeah, John McCain, one of the Walking Dead. You know, he gets he's I think an extra in the Walking Dead series. that's on uh, cable television on Direct TV. I think John I, I definitely McCain, McCain, zombie senator. Yeah. Zombie Senator, and of course he wandered out of the Alzheimer unit and went to Syria to one of their camps to the Al Nurse Al Qaeda. Said, "No problem. You want man pads? Uh, you want Stinger missiles? You want heavy weapons? We got them. We'll give them to you. No problem." Against American Airliners in Chicago and Atlanta and Hartsfield Airport? No problem. You know who wants a little few dead Americans among allies, even if you're bad allies? Who cares? Yeah, this is, and, and what you see with, with McCain was really, uh, you know, this this is really about as far as you can go toward treason, because he was yeah. meeting with the same people who had uh, uh, committed acts of uh, terrorism. Right. Against America, and also publicly made statements even months before that when they get these man pads, these stinger missiles, these ground air missiles, they're going to use them against American airliners on American soil. They said this, and the reason why Benghazi happened is the State Department under Hillary Clinton gave these weapons, then, quote, tried to get them, quote, back, realizing that they really screwed up, and they were told not to intervene even if uh, uh, Stevens and his compatriots died because they wanted to cover up the whole fact that they actually gave these advanced weapons which the al-Qaeda, nurse al-Qaeda terrorists, were going to use against American aircraft, American citizens, here and abroad. McCain could have been sent to Guantanamo for meeting with the people he met with in Syria, because they're terrorists who have carried out acts of terrorism against the United States, including in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just uh, it, it blows your mind. You just say, What? I mean, anybody with two clues realizes these guys are taking a situation just like you mentioned about this talk of this Chinese gentleman, that we're natural allies, that the American Constitution and Confucianism actually are very parallel, and we would be natural allies with Russia and China, and we deal with the Muslim issue in a proper way. We would dissect out the what I call extreme Islam, and we'd see in the 21st century the reformation of Islam, so it would become non-extreme. What we've done, and the British have done for the last 150 years, is to radicalize, to fund the uh, the, the Wahhabist schools in Saudi Arabia, going back 150 years, to make sure that we can radicalize them as a good dialectic for uh, our, our, in other words, train a bad dog that'll bite on command. That's what's happened. Well, and, and that's where you see the uh, the real effect of, of the loss of an understanding of what the Fourth of July is about. Because what, what we right. had at our conference, we talked about the Second American Revolution, getting back to the principles of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, which include protecting people against large private special interests like the banks and insurance companies instead the banks and insurance companies now run the government secondly the other part of the fourth of july should be a rebellion against the principles of the british empire which no longer is the same kind of seagoing empire although they still have a very large naval for naval force for the size of their country but it is still an empire in terms of financial terms and it's 
policies to restrict other nations from developing, including our own nation. And Obama is a deployment by the British to destroy the United States. So when people celebrate tomorrow, the 4th of July, they should think about what it means to be an American and what we're losing by having a British agent in the White House of the United States. Right. And by the way, a British agent, not of Britain, the nation of Britain, but of the city of London, which is an autonomous kingdom, just like the Vatican, which is also a cohort trying to do things like Islam to unite Islam. We're not talking about regular Islam. We're talking about extreme Islam. It's, so, it's, a, it's what I call the new religion is a religion of tolerance, not the idea of being different and it's okay. Uh, it, but the West does everything. They uh, radicalize religion, Islam. They uh, then support radical Islam to do regime change, and then they make alliances with these extremists. It's just crazy. I mean, this is a policy that the British established 300 years ago. This is how they've taken over the empires of Russia, China, how they've manipulated countries, how the British bankers, Rothschild masters, have run everything. But the problem now is they don't control China and Russia at this point. And as a result, right. they are uh, trying to get them into a war with the United States, with the idea that the United States and Russia can destroy each other. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, that's the whole idea. The they, they, their idea is... To, <laughs> uh, the, the Russians don't want to do that. have an idea of how to get out of this. But with... Uh, well, with, without a better idea, they're going to end up in uh, complete chaos. And, and that's why Putin is playing the game he's playing with Obama and basically uh, saying that he's, he doesn't want to hurt U.S. relations. Uh, the problem is it's not the American people he's against. He's against the president. Well, let me give you advice to Mr. Putin. He was doing well until he opened his mouth last week and said that. I would advise him to have a regular press release with sitting right beside Mr. Snowden, right from, uh, from, from Moscow, and maybe with a picture in the background of, of the Red Square. Uh, he should come out and make statements of, hey, we've learned our lessons from totalitarian regimes. We've learned our lessons in East Germany with the Spitznots. That's why the Germans are so inflamed, inflamed about this. Uh, and, and there's a level of, of spying that's, quote, considered natural among, quote, allies. But this way exceeds that. Even business deals. And the problem is that business corporations in America are getting background information leaked to them from these intelligence agencies when they deal with Europeans. So the Europeans are rightfully enraged over this because they know nothing that they can say on the phone or in these meetings means anything. It's all going back through back channels so that their competitors can have inside track information. It's very disgusting. Well, that's, that's Amazing. the world we live in. It's, yeah, but it's a world that Obama and, of course, Bush, too, are not going to just absolve the Republican Party. We have oh, two legs yeah. of a monster here, and we need to clean up the Democrats. They need to realize that they need to flush Obama. The Republicans got to get a backbone transplant and start doing their job, or God help us, this 4th of July is going to be a celebration of disaster coming. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, <clears throat> this 4th of July, we want to think, pick up people's spirits. Uh, let's talk about solutions in this last segment, because uh, we have the idiot in chief. Uh, basically, he's embarrassing himself to the point where even people that used to support Obama have to hide their head in shame. Uh, I talk to Democrats, and some will pretend to be Republicans when I talk to them, because they want to crack jokes and they want to see if you'll say something stupid. But in actual fact, they're so embarrassed by Obama, they can't defend the idiot anymore, even if they wanted to. It, because it's just it's just not even logical. It's not funny anymore. There's nothing. I mean, uh, the, the 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 group of people that met him at the Brandenburg Gate here a few weeks ago was 4,500 compared to 200,000 back uh, in 2009 when he went to the Brandenburg Gate in Germany. Well, there was He's an article mocked everywhere by he goes. Gideon, there was an article by Gideon Rockman, who's sort of a liberal columnist, who said the idea of Obama as the liberal hero is now gone. <laughs> And I think that's an important yeah. point, because this is someone who no longer has the support of what was his base. Right. Well, he basically is, everything about him is a lie. In fact, I think there's a movie coming out next year. Maybe this is what he should do, is involve himself with a script called The Lying King. 
<laughs> you like that, eh? <laughs> and they'll show a picture of Barack Obama only as the Lion King only. It'll all be in CGI, right? So, and I, we'll have to have a script, you know, where we think there's going to be this great hero. And so, if we hear a state of a hero that falls, he's all just phoniness, all given a silver spoon all the way from his entire life, and turns out to be a total dick, a total asshole. Well, I think the point is that the, that the game is no longer accepted by most people, that, that there has right. been a turn against him, and right. that's very significant. And well, I, everything I is based on his economic policies are, 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 don't even have logic based on economics. His foreign policies are crazy because he's going to put Americans in danger. He's putting Israel in danger, our ally. And I went, as I said, I've said this on the show before, no matter what you say about Israel, Israel is like the 51st state. We lose Israel. I mean, if we had, for example, no Israel state since 1960, 1948, 1967, we would be paying 10 times as much for oil. We would have beheadings before Friday morning prayer in every major city in the U.S. 30 years ago. People need to understand this. They don't understand the dynastic wealth that's been accumulated in the Mideast by Arab oil countries and how much they would have us by the short woolies if we didn't have the state of Israel there. Not only that, that's just on the economic policy. In the religious policy, Christians, now he's supporting El Nurse Al Qaeda and these terrorists. They're going into Christian villages in Syria and killing and broke, destroying churches that are 2,000 years old, killing Christians, and turning fathers into, into living bombs, or they'll execute their entire family right in front of them. This is the support that Obama's giving. This is craziness. Now, this is, in fact, exactly what the Obama policy is. It's an alliance well, with Al Qaeda. I know what it is. We've been putting it out it is, for a they, while. There's, there should be no one in the Congress at this point who doesn't know it. And so the I know why he's is, running a popularity contest. I can tell you this though, before I lose this thought. I know why Obama is acting like he's still running for election. He's running for Antichrist. Well, look, let me. You just said we should get the solution. <laughs> let me give. Let me give people yeah. a solution here. There's a bill yeah. before the Senate by two conservative Republicans, Rand Paul and Mike Lee of Utah. And two liberal Democrat, Democrats, uh, uh, Tom Udall from uh, New Mexico and Con uh, Senator Murphy from Connecticut. And it would say, it says that there can be no armed deliveries in Syria until this has gone before the U.S. Congress. Now, this is a, there's a companion bill for this in the House put it forward by Congressman Walter Jones, a Republican from North Carolina, who sent a tape to our conference in San Francisco. Now, this is beginning to get some traction and support in the Congress. And everyone who's listening to this program should call your congressman and demand they support the Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Murphy bill in the Senate and the, the uh, Walter Jones bill in the House that there should be no U.S. support for terrorists in Syria. And I think that's really important. That's something that people can talk about with their family and friends over the uh, 4th of July uh, barbecue and plan by Friday to be on the phone. Yeah, good plan, because uh, this makes, if we did that, firstly, it'll unravel. Secondly, if we push Glass-Steagall, what's the status of the Glass-Steagall bill? What's the support level now, and can it happen before the summer uh, re recess? Well, the status is that the, uh, there's a Senate bill and a House bill. There's been nothing done recently because the, the Senate and the House are all tied up on useless discussions around immigration and things of that sort. Yeah, exactly. What we need right. to do is get the Glass-Steagall bill immediately because there are reports coming out of very highly reliable sources that the banking system's about to blow. Now, let me just give you an example of that. Warren Buffett is dumping stocks like crazy. John right. Paulson, the hedge fund guy, uh, his hedge fund sold off 14 million shares of J.P. Morgan, which generally is considered right. one of the most solid of the two big-to-fail banks. Uh, right. And George Soros has sold all his bank stocks. And when Soros was asked why, he said, well, uh, periodically these things go up and down, and I think they're going to go down. Now, at the same time, the IMF is giving yeah, another ultimatum to Greece, uh, which takes effect on Friday, that if Greece doesn't do more austerity, they're not going to get the next tranche of loans, in which case they're going to default on 2.2 billion euros, which could trigger a whole collapse in Europe. Uh, the finance minister of Portugal resigned this week because he said he can't do this anymore. And so you've got right. every sing signal you could want telling you 
this thing is going. It's going to be gone yeah. soon. Well, 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 here's what I'm saying, and I want people to watch it because I think I'm the very first to say this. We're going to have a parallel airborne plague and a bond market blow up between now and the end of the year. And I believe that this is all designed. The plague is all designed. Even the announcement where they did the test, and you know about the international interbank uh, loan rate, which is 3.3%, went up to 12.4 for a few days, the interbank overnight loan rate. Uh, that was a warning test to see if they could blow up the bond market, which they want to do. They want to control demolition of the world economy. At the same time, we can declare martial law caused by an airborne plague, and it's coming. And I believe it's coming within a matter of months. And they're going to do this. Uh, it'll be short, sharp. Then they'll come back out with a world biometric currency because they've already delayed it since 2009. But by May of next year, and they delayed it again, they want to have every American have, and this is tied with the immigration bill. The immigration bill has very little to do with immigration. It is a biometric worker ID with a DHS being able to access and ask for additional biometrics, which is why the Snowden issue is such a big deal. They built the backbone for the mark of the beast. That system, they will at least temporarily haul in Europe, Russia, and China into this biometric system. India's already done it. By next year, they'll have most of their citizens will be biometrically scanned. 1.2 billion people. This is craziness, but this is what Obama and the world bankers want. They want to blow up the economy. They want to steal everything in a fire sale, and they want to have a biometric world currency after they declare martial law and shut down the banks with a, quote, bank holiday. And I like the, the jingle that Salente sings, holiday. It's not going to be a holiday, you know, where you sing the song, you know, like that <laughs> Rodgers and Hammerstein. No, this is going to be not a holiday that will be fun. When you go to your gas machine or your bank teller machine or you try to get cash out, you'll be either limited dramatically or you'll get none. This is what they want to do, and they're going to do it soon. Well, that, and that is what happened in Cyprus, and Cyprus is the model. Right, and they've already tested. The, they've done the laboratory tests already. Last week when they did the test and the interbank rate went up because Bernanke just hinted that they might raise, uh, they might raise the uh, interest rate by stopping putting out more trillions of dollars and buying uh, tre uh, treasury notes. Everybody freaked out, and the stock market went down like a, like a lead balloon. It was craziness. This is all by design. People don't even understand. They don't see the dialectics that these guys are manipulating. That's why, you know, uh, George dropping stocks. He knows damn well what's going to happen. Well, and that's why LaRouche is saying that the problem we have is money. But as long as people believe that money is wealth, then whoever has the money will be powerful. And if we can convince people that wealth comes from the creative mind and that a government that organizes its population around creativity will have productivity from new inventions, innovation, and that's how you solve this. So I, I encourage people, go to LaRouchePack.com, look at our website, look get some ideas for discussion around the barbecue pit on the 4th of July, and be prepared to mobilize the same way the forces had to be mobilized 150 years ago to win the battles of Gettysburg and Vicksburg to save the Union. That's where we are today. Yeah. We need that kind of mobilization. Most definitely. Yeah. Positive action. Already, we see the degradation of the Obama myth. We see the lying king uh, losing his shine in Africa and everywhere he's embarrassing. Uh, we see the move in both the Senate and Congress. They need to get back on track. Stop this stupid foolishness about immigration. Deal with the real issues of jobs, national security, and not arming Islamic terrorists. And of course, in July, we can have it. We can celebrate it if we take action. But otherwise, we're just eating hot dogs, eating deep fried ice cream, and pretending that everything's okay. If you do something, then you can really celebrate the 4th of July. Contact them, 800 922 2907. 